Hey, so today I am 35 weeks and Sunday, two, three days, just over 35 weeks. There's 35 weeks on Saturday. And I just came out of my OB appointment and I just wanted to give you guys an update. Um, I had high blood pressure at the end of my pregnancy with my third. So now I'm kind of on the watch for all the rest of my pregnancies in case I do get high blood pressure again, especially at the end. So at 12 weeks, I was put on aspirin 81 milligrams. Every single day I have to take one tablet. Um, my doctor just told me today that I don't have to keep taking it past next week. However, I've been having these little episodes. They come on randomly and they usually last for about 20 minutes. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. I could be prepping for dinner. I could be sitting down relaxing and it just comes on as massive chest pain. Um, not like huge, like I don't think I'm having a heart attack, but it's chest pain. It makes it really hard to breathe and not just your normal breathlessness that you have at, you know, towards the end of your pregnancy because the baby's pushing on your diaphragm and stuff. I just can't quite take a full breath. It's like a half a breath and I have to stop, focus on my breathing, try and really relax. Sometimes I get dizzy or I get headaches when this happens. Um, sometimes my body gets a little weak when this happens. So it was just concerning to me. And especially if I don't take my aspirin in the morning, then this happens all day long. I get these episodes and the symptoms will come and go throughout the entire day until I realize I haven't taken my aspirin. And then I take it and within about 20 minutes, it usually goes away. So I told my OB that today and she doesn't really know what it is or why it's happening. It's not, she doesn't think it's related to the high blood pressure. So I don't really know what it is or why it's happening, but she doesn't really seem like too concerned about it. Like not that it's life threatening or anything to me or the baby. It's just these random episodes shouldn't say anything about coming in or getting monitored when they happen. So I don't think she's that worried about it in a risk way. So I guess in a way I'm not too worried about it either in a risky way, but that's just how I've been feeling over the last couple of weeks. I think it started maybe around when I was 32 or 33 weeks pregnant, I started getting these random little, I call them episodes. I don't really know what they are. I don't feel stressed out before. I don't feel anxious. I've never, thankfully, I've never suffered from anxiety or anything like that. So I don't know if maybe these are just little anxiety attacks or something, just because I really want to know if we're having a boy or girl and when it's going to happen and stuff like that. I know I do get super excited near the end of my pregnancies because I just love holding that newborn and I get really excited. So I don't know, perhaps maybe it is a bit of an anxiety attack or something. I'm not sure. I've never had anxiety or anything. So, but like I said, my OB is not really worried. I'm not too worried. Um, but good news with COVID, they're actually letting us schedule inductions right now. So especially people who have pets that need to be taken care of, or um, I have obviously three boys at home that I need to try to arrange childcare with when the time baby time comes. So we are contemplating, she just has to double check to see if she has any C-sections scheduled, but baby day scheduled induction could be April 28th. So that's pretty exciting. I'm excited, although I don't know, my second, his birthday is the 27th, and our puppy that we got last year is actually born April 26th, so that would be like three birthdays in a row. April 26th would be our dog's birthday, April 22nd would be my second, Jonathan, his birthday, and then April 28th, or did I say April 22nd? April 27th is Jonathan's birthday. 
and then April 28th or 29th would be the new baby's birthday. And then my birthday is May 4th. So that's a lot of birthdays all in a row. But apparently Josh and I just really like spring babies, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but I think that's pretty much all of the updates I have right now. Um, like I said, other than that, other than the episodes that I've been having, I've been feeling really great. I feel like the baby, the doctor said that it's not dropping yet. But I feel like it's starting to. I feel a lot less pressure on my diaphragm. Two weeks ago, I felt like I couldn't breathe at all, all the time, all day long. And I knew it was just because the baby was super high up. I've had, I've carried high this pregnancy. And I felt like the baby was super high up. There was constantly like feet under my ribs and stuff. And within this last week, I've really felt more pressure and I feel like I'm carrying lower into my pelvis now but he hasn't or she hasn't fully dropped yet so we're still waiting for that but again with multiple pregnancies that might not happen until right before labor so and then other than that I've been feeling pretty great I'm trying to plan out um some meal prepping snack prepping especially for the boys at home because I don't like leaving them in the care of someone else and not having snacks ready or meals ready stuff like that I mean lunch is pretty easy we do you know we have Mr. Noodles craft dinner stuff like that at home sandwiches stuff for salads but I don't like I don't want to leave whoever's going to be watching my kids whether it's my mom or Josh's mom I don't want to leave them having to figure out dinner so I need to start thinking about meals that I can just throw into the freezer so that way when baby time comes they're not scrambling to figure out what meals that they need to cook for the boys especially for dinner dinner is always hard I have such a hard time trying to figure out what to cook for dinner every single night and as much as I meal plan and I have meal planned and I have done a week of dinners scheduled them got the groceries for them and then when that day comes and the time comes I don't want to eat what's for Tuesday on dinner you know, I'm like, okay, I'm going to add Thursday sounds more delicious and appetizing. I'm going to have that. And then my meal plan just kind of goes out the window. Always happens to me. I don't know why it sounds so delicious at the time when I am prepping dinners for the week. And then when that day comes, I'm just not up for eating whatever I have made or planned for that day. So, um, but I am going to freeze maybe, I don't know, some lasagnas, maybe some pasta bakes, get stuff that it can be really easy to make some salads things like that and then oh I did right now because of COVID um, in the hospitals we two weeks ago was my last doctor's appointment and as far as the knowledge that I had with like when it was time baby time um Josh was not like once we were in the labor and delivery ward we were not allowed to leave obviously I'm not allowed to leave but he would not be allowed to leave whether it was for meals or anything like that so Josh and I were trying to figure out do we bring a cooler full of sandwiches and snacks and stuff like that you know I make homemade granola bars at home that I find on the recipes on Pinterest and stuff so we were kind of worried about how he was going to eat because at least I would have meals sent up to me, but we didn't know how he was going to eat. And the cafeteria was under construction as well. So they had these little pop-up canteens in the hospital that are only open um, during a certain time on certain days and how we were going to get food for Josh. So I just got the okay that they just changed the rules they are a little bit more relaxed in letting the spouses leave and come back they want them to keep it to a minimum obviously i totally understand that but he is now allowed to leave to go get food so if they want to give me the egg salad sandwiches that they always seem to love giving at lunchtime i can send him out for subway or freshie or something delicious like that so i'm super excited about that that if i don't really like the meals we can at least go and get a few meals of takeout and the nurses do let us use the fridge in the labor and delivery ward so we could potentially get a few like subway subs or something like that get the sauce on the side 
um, freshy, which has a lot of the really yummy bowls that you can eat. So it's like quinoa with lettuce and some roasted red pepper, stuff like that. Just really good stuff for you. And they put them in a bowl, you can get them in a burrito or whatever. But like I said, the nurses let us use the fridge. So it'd be awesome to be able to just have a few backup meals that we can just throw in the fridge and eat if we really don't like what's being served. Cause I've tried egg salad sandwiches so many times and it is just not my cup of tea. I don't like it. It's not appetizing. I love tuna. Give me tuna, give me an option, you know, but with our hospital, it's whatever they're serving that day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and you don't have an option. So if you don't like it, you have to go find something else. Well, that wasn't an option two weeks ago. We, Josh and I were basically ready to fill a camping cooler full of food and bring it to the hospital and just have a, basically a camp out. But good news, he can go get food if we need to. So I'm happy about that. I'm happy to tell him that because I'm sure he's going to be super excited. Um, the only thing I'm not looking forward to, honestly, with the scheduled induction is that I have to go and get a COVID test. I have watched so many birth vlogs on the internet and they do COVID tests in the hospital. And I don't know if it's just because we live in a small town, we don't have a lab on site, it has to get sent off to a lab to get analyzed and stuff. But the only time that we have to have a COVID test if we are in labor and delivery is if we are having an induction and it's not like an emergency induction. You go three days before your induction date, get a COVID test and just you, your partner doesn't. And then that's it. Whereas last time with my third, I basically had an induction on the day of my 39 week appointment, they started the induction right away because of my high blood pressure. So in cases like that, you wouldn't have to have a COVID test done ahead of time, obviously, because there is no time and they're not going to do it in the hospital because we don't have a lab where we can get results in a few hours. So not looking forward to the COVID test if my body doesn't go into labor on its own. So I might talk to my OB about the chances of the midwife's brew. I've heard many success stories. It has like an 85% success rate with the midwife's brew. I wouldn't take it until I was really close to 39 weeks. Um, so, and I'm 39 weeks the Saturday before May 1st, because May 1st is my due date. So I'd be 40 weeks then. So whatever that Saturday is beforehand, I'm 39 weeks. So I might try the midwife sprue the Friday night. So that way I would kind of go into labor the Friday night, be 39 weeks, which is now technically full term on the Saturday, and then maybe have a baby on the Saturday so I don't have to get a COVID test. So I don't know. I'll keep you guys posted though. I will do weekly updates with my OB appointments and just let you know how the baby's doing, how I'm doing, if anything's changed. So as of right now, potentially scheduled induction, April 28th and baby's fine. Heart rates in the 130s, 140s. So I think if I feel like the old wives tale is a low heart rate as a boy. So if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. But, and also I did look up, if you're carrying high, apparently that's a boy. Um, but I can totally blow that one out of the water because my first two pregnancies I carried so low that I thought anytime I sat down that I was just gonna pop a baby out. That's how low I was carrying. And they're both boys. And my third, I carried pretty high like this one, not as high as this one, but pretty high. So I was convinced my third was a girl. And that was a boy too. So who knows? surprise gender so hope you guys have a great day and i will check in if anything else happens and if not i'll talk to you guys next week bye